You know how we like to end the show, no matter what. There's always good news somewhere, and we think good news rules. And today, our good news comes from a very special guest. I'm out of here! He couldn't have gone far, unless he can fly. Can tarantulas fly? Jake, you better find that spider. And I'm not coming back here until you do! Uh, Sarge, I think I found it. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? Oh, no. It's on my head! <laughs> He is the sergeant on Brooklyn Nine-Nine and the newest host of my favorite show, America's Got Talent. And here's something else that to me is most important. He's an outspoken advocate for women's rights and changing how we talk about what it is to be a man. Someone I am so grateful for everything he does. The former NFL superstar turned actor Terry Crews joins me now. My friend, you have a lot going on. A new season Ooh. of Brooklyn Nine-Nine and America's Got Talent, which again, Greatest show ever. What are you most excited for? I mean, just my whole life right now. <laughs> I'm trying there you to go. Think. He's Both, winning. You got to understand. I mean, these shows are premiering on the same week, which is great. We were number one on Monday night. Uh, America's Got Talent. It was, it was Susan Boyle returned. I was hosting for the first time. And then now on Thursday evening, Brooklyn Nine-Nine comes back. Uh, we were canceled. We got picked up by NBC. And now we're back. This is the biggest week of my life. I call it Terry Week right now. I'm going, oh, my my God, it's so much, and uh, it's shows, incredible. These shows are also celebratory shows. We That's talk right. about how divided people are. That's right. These are shows that parents enjoy watching with kids, people from all over. So when we say how angry the country is, you're in a really happy place. Uh, oh, definitely. I mean, you know, one thing that I always had to do is really separate. You know, you can't be mad at people. I, I think the, the big thing. I, I get pretty mad at my sister. I, I, you know, yeah. this, but this is wild. You know, what you have to understand is that there are no evil people. There are evil mindsets. You do not battle people. You battle mindsets. So it's funny. If someone changes their mindset, in, instantly they'll be good. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and it's wild because when you start battling people, you start getting into little details. It's kind of like trying to cut a tree down by the leaves. You know what I mean? It doesn't work. The, the, if you don't deal with the mindset, which is at the root, all of a sudden stuff comes back. And I, I have been a part of a crazy, crazy life. But I mean... When I say toxic, when people talk about toxic masculinity and the whole thing, I was a very toxic man myself. I look at this whole thing as I was guilty. I was guilty in many, many ways. I, I wrote a book about pretty much that whole toxic manhood thing in my book uh, in 2014 called Manhood that really just exposed and shared a lot of things. And what was so wild is that the world wasn't ready for it. My, my, even my own publisher was like, oh, really? Is that what you want to talk about? I was like, oh my God. And then 2017 happened and people started to realize, whoa, wait a minute. And you got to understand, the whole thing is like a cult. Masculinity can be a cult. And it was people like, well, why are they not understanding? Why don't they just see they're doing things wrong and the whole thing? But you got to understand, in a cult, it's different. You don't, you don't hear what's really happening. You have been sucked in, and you are totally into the group think, and you don't even think as an individual. So when someone says, you're hurting me, whatever, you don't even understand it. But Terry, you didn't choose that mindset. You didn't decide to become toxic. This is the first time we're actually seeing a real challenge in how we raise our boys and what masculinity looks like. I was mentioning it to you before. Right. I went to see a school with my, with my children, and, and, and the person giving the tour said, and this is where the girls practice chorus, and this is where the boys play soccer. And I thought, what? And suddenly we're starting to realize the message we're sending our boys is making them bottle up who they are. Yes. And it's not you're gay, you're straight. Why can't boys express themselves? Do you feel like you were in a position where you had to suck it up and man up? And is this a moment to change that? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because we, you, now this is another thing we have to understand. In America, it's about narratives. We live on entertainment, movies, stories, a whole thing about you've been told a story. As a man, your narrative, you live in an action movie. Every man is his own action movie. And what happens is, as a boy, you're told, this is the story. This is how it is. And in that action movie, you're invincible. In that action movie, you get all the girls. In that action mm -hmm. movie, you have to be tough and emotionless. And the problem is, none of that is real. Okay. None of it. But so while we're trying in, in, in a way to say, let's get away from the toxic masculinity, yep. there's this other narrative that I actually think is a false narrative 
narrative out there. Well, there's a war out there on men. Men are under attack. I, I don't believe men are under attack. No. Men are, the door is open for men to be more. What, what happens is, you, and I say this before, you cannot love someone and control them at the same time. If you are trying to control people, of course you're going to feel like you're under attack because people do not want to be controlled. And that's when you're talking about this mindset of masculinity, the cult of masculinity, it's about controlling people. You're told as a kid, dominate, control. If people, if, let me tell you, there are people who feel like if everyone in this room is not uncomfortable, we're not working. That's the, the, the mindset. The job is already hard enough. So, but what happens is you get all these other things tacked on where your boss has to make you feel uncomfortable in order to feel like you're actually doing a job. But that's control, it's not love. And when you, have to, when you love your employees, when you love your people, like I love the people I work with on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, it's all wonderful. You don't have to feel upset. But anybody who's getting that kind of blowback is like, oh my God, they're attacking men. No, what's happening, you're trying to control everybody and they're resisting you. If you lead with love and create a positive environment around you, you're going to soften all these sharp edges. I have to ask you about something um, that is a bit tough, R. Kelly. Yes. You know, you mentioned before 2018 happened, uh, Me Too. It's amazing to me, the docuseries came out last week with so many accusers yep. against R. Kelly, uh, accusing him of, of sexual abuse for years. Yep. What amazed me is immediately after his music sales went up, I mean, that's amazing. With all the struggling artists out there, people are saying, I want to double down on R. Kelly, but he is denying it all. Yeah. Well, see, again, uh, we have to talk about cutting the tree down by the leaves. The dangerous thing is, let's get rid of R. Kelly. And when R. Kelly is gone, because it's going to happen, everybody says, okay, problem's over. But the problem is, the mindset is still there. The whole thing, it's like trying, you, you, you know, with the Titanic, you can't put it in reverse. You know what I mean? It takes a whole lot of people to make that happen. And what's happened is, it's like, people want to blame one person for sinking the Titanic. But no, it was a host of a whole bunch of people. But he's not just one person. He's a famous person that gets richer and more famous with public support. But again, that's all false. I mean, my thing is, is he really rich? No. But my, he, you can give R. Kelly all the money, he, all the money in the world, and all of a sudden, everybody knows he's going to end up in jail because this is ridiculous and we the, the more he's exposed the more this stuff comes out the, the less he has I, I'm trying to tell you we're going to get rid of him it's Bill Cosby's gone Weinstein's gone but the big thing is the mindset has to go there's, a, there's so many people who still support him there's so many people who get are getting away with all this stuff he was doing you know, they were right there there were there was a group of people that were allowing him to do this kind of stuff and that's the thing I'm attacking it's like the hey man er, men must hold other men accountable period and and what, if you don't go up to a, a guy who's messing up and say hey man we don't do that stop that but what's happened is people look the other way i was guilty i remember looking the other way you know what i mean and so you looked no the other way because that was the environment you didn't think you could change it exactly well if we trust more if we love more and if we care about the people around us I truly think the world can get better. Uh -huh. And I'm truly excited for America's Got Talent. You must be too. It's an amazing show, and it's only going to get better with Terry. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me, or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.